Okay, where's the God of War Ragnarok video? It's been over a year and a half now, so what's the deal? Well, the answer to that is complicated, and involves a lot of personal topics like family issues and mental health. I've written about five versions of this update over the last week, and have gradually tweaked it to more accurately reflect how I'm feeling at the time. I opted not to do this unscripted because I have a tendency to ramble and talk in circles, and I'd really like to keep this short. So, here's the deal. A lot of things in my life got really difficult over the last six months, and it all came to a head in February when I couldn't handle the stress anymore and had a bit of a breakdown. To skip over all the negative bits that I really don't want to talk about, I'm now in therapy and things are much better. This last week was actually one of the best I've had in pretty close to a year, which is why I've been redrafting this update so much. I don't see any reason for it to be so overly negative if I'm genuinely feeling better by this point. I want to take a moment to thank my friend Gwen and our mutual friend Haley for getting me through this, because I honestly can't imagine what would have happened if they weren't there. For those of you who don't know, Gwen is a streamer who I've known for several years at this point, although I've only been active in her streams for about a year now. I've edited several videos on her YouTube and TikTok, and despite what she thinks, I am more of a co-host on her streams than a recurring guest. Will you step back for me? Okay. Because this is going to go sideways. Chat, you saw how close I was to dying. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. I said step back. I said yeah. it was gonna go- Ping! Okay, I... Use your pings! Step back where? Just away. I stepped away, and guess what? What does that even mean? Me. I away. Typical man. Typical guy! I'm gonna link all her socials in the description, and while I'm aware that most of my audience isn't going to be very interested in her type of content, I would really appreciate if you go drop her a follow on Twitch. She streams every Saturday at around 7pm Eastern Time, and I'm almost always there running some games with her. If you think it's weird for me to plug her Twitch during such a serious discussion, that's because I haven't mentioned that she pretty much single-handedly saved this channel. I came very close to quitting YouTube for good. I think it's normal for any creator who's stuck in a serious rut to consider giving up, and it's healthy to want to explore other hobbies, but this was more serious than most of the times I've thought about this. I not only started losing faith in myself to make these videos, I started questioning if I even enjoy it anymore, or if I even enjoy playing games at all. In reality, none of these are true. I'm perfectly capable of making these videos, and I do enjoy them. I just hadn't had the capacity to work on it because of everything I had going on. It's worth mentioning here that I do have a full-time job, so working in my free time wasn't exactly appealing at the time. But that was then. It's honestly amazing how much the situation has improved in just two months, and I still have at least two projects in the works that I think I'm finally ready to resume. The first is, of course, the Ragnarok video. The script is completely finished, give or take a few sections I may or may not need to tweak, but I usually do that as I record the voiceover anyways. The entire thing is about 230 pages and over 100,000 words. As a reference, my Jedi Fallen Order script was 92 pages and roughly 42,000 words, so this is at least two and a half times the size of my last video. I've already recorded some of the script back in late January, and the introduction is completely finished, which I'll be showing at the end of this update. Still, I want to be upfront and say that this is going to take a very long time to produce. I'm trying to get a more structured work schedule figured out, but I don't have the physical ability to have those all-day recording sessions like I could before. I no longer work a job that requires me to talk for practically 8 hours straight, so I'm not nearly as long-winded as I used to be. This means that recording this thing is going to be a long process, and editing it will be even longer. Now, let's talk about the future. The gothic video is on hold after my lovely kitten broke my external hard drive, which had the one and only copy of the script on it. I was almost certain I had at least three or four copies backed up somewhere, but nope, I apparently only had one. Hello to everybody who found me through my Daggerfall video I released three years ago. Yes, I made the same mistake twice. I do still have my gameplay and extensive notes, but that script was at least a year's worth of work, so I'm hoping it can be recovered. The cat's name is Sushi, by the way. Here's a few pictures of us together. As you can see, she's very cute, and as you can see, so am I. Truly a match made in hell. I also have plans for a video on Jedi Survivor at some point, although I don't think I'll do that immediately after Ragnarok depending on how I feel at the time. I plan to have some smaller videos out this year too, but most of the work after that is going to be spent trying to finish the gothic video. I'll probably try to break that up into a video series if it gets too big, but we'll see. 
I'm still really enthusiastic about that project, despite it basically being in development hell, so I don't plan on giving up on it anytime soon. A few more announcements before I wrap this up. I first want to mention that I've rebranded the second channel again. You probably didn't even know that I had one, and that's because I never knew what I actually wanted to do with it until now. This is going to be for videos that are more akin to the stream highlights that I've made for Gwen, just a short compilation of us being idiots and having a good time. Her niche is made up of a genre that I like to call jackass horror games like Phasmophobia, Lethal Company, and more recently, a new game that just came out called Content Warning. I've already made a quick edit from clips that I got playing that game with our friend Vera, which can be found on the Salty Shrimp Pasta official ASMR channel. That's the name, don't question it. In the same vein, I'm going to try and find some time to stream at least once a week. I was previously doing a New Game Plus Plus playthrough on Ragnarok with a very fun build that I'm not going to talk about here since it involves major spoilers, and I've been itching to get back to that playthrough and keep going. I haven't touched it since the last gameplay stream, so I'm trying to figure out a good time to schedule them that allows me to maintain some semblance of a social life. Or a life in general, actually. I often struggle to maintain a good work-life balance when the channel feels like a second job sometimes, but I'll figure something out. So yeah, that's just about it. I know the channel is in a content drought right now, but I really appreciate you guys for understanding and allowing me to take the time I need to sort things out. I've only recently gotten to a point where I can actually begin to address these issues and start to work on them, so it really wouldn't be fair to myself to say that I was just ignoring the problem before. I've actually been told that my own expectations are way too harsh and I need to chill out and let myself breathe. This doesn't mean that things are going to be 100% smooth from here, but I'm taking things day by day and allowing myself to feel good now without worrying about the future. With all that said, thank you for tuning in to this little update, and I hope you enjoy the Ragnarok introduction. I am deeply torn about God of War Ragnarok. So many words come to my mind when I think of it. Some good, some bad, some angry, some profane. A lot of words come to my mind when I think of this game. I really enjoyed it whenever I first played it, but have gradually fallen out of love with it after each subsequent playthrough, despite it easily being one of the best games that I've played in recent years. And it's a game that I've been anticipating since playing its predecessor all the way back in 2018. I'm far more critical of that game now than I was when it first released, but I still regard it as a solid game that delivers a great story, despite its flaws. Naturally, any game that followed was going to be on my radar, and despite my many reservations about the combat leading up to its release, I was still really excited to see where they took the story next. Even with those reservations, I still enjoyed Ragnarok whenever I finally played it. I happened to have almost two weeks of PTO scheduled when it released, and I spent almost the entire time just playing this game. The best way that I can summarize my feelings after that first playthrough is that Ragnarok is impressive, yet disappointing. The more that I've played it since then, the more apathetic I've become towards it, and this apathy only grew after completing my second, third, and eventually fourth playthrough. Many reviewers and critics have fallen into the trap of thinking that Ragnarok is an easy target due to its popularity back at release, but this game has joined many others in a growing list of games that look simple on the surface, but are ridiculously complex behind the scenes. Unfortunately, Ragnarok's complexity comes more from a lack of communication and transparency about how its systems actually work than anything else, and learning them through trial, error, and experimentation was not an enjoyable experience, even if I view these systems favorably now that I know what makes them tick. I really want to love this game, but I don't. It certainly feels superior to God of War 2018 in most areas, but the keyword there is most. There is an unfortunate relationship between these two games that actively brings Ragnarok down. So much has been added in this sequel that, at first glance, it feels like an objective improvement. You can see this in the opening hours of the game on the higher difficulties. The previous game was such a slog on Give Me God of War at the start of the game that it felt like a joke whenever I went back to play it after my fourth playthrough, despite having already beaten it in the past. Ragnarok is so much more enjoyable by comparison, and I think it's worth stressing that despite its many faults, it is the superior game. But the longer you play, the more you'll start to see just how much has stayed the same, and it's these similarities that make up the chains that keep the combat from feeling as free and liberating as it should. 
Many enemies have the same awkward animations that were present in the previous game. The camera still feels ineffective for this type of combat system, and there's still this general clunkiness to most of the gameplay. A big problem with doing so many playthroughs is that I've now become so familiar with these systems that I can easily work around these issues, so it's easy to forget just how frustrating it was to get to this point. This game was built on an imperfect foundation, so it inherited many flaws from its predecessor. However, it would be dishonest to say that Ragnarok hasn't added anything to the experience, and anybody who says this clearly hasn't spent enough time with it, or they never cared to begin with. One of the many things that I've concluded after all these playthroughs and a total playtime in the triple digits is that, despite the similarities, you can't play Ragnarok the same way you did its predecessor. It needs to be approached with an open mind and a willingness to engage with it on its own terms. Sometimes this means you'll have to meet the game more than halfway just to enjoy it, and I can't blame anybody for being unwilling to do so. With that said, if you liked God of War 2018 and its story, then you owe it to yourself to play this game. There are enough similarities between them to make Ragnarok feel like a proper sequel, it just requires a different mindset to play effectively, because I can confidently say that none of the old tricks that got me through the previous game actually worked in this one. Even so, there's so much to see and do, and at least one of the worlds kept expanding long after I thought I'd seen it all. What Santa Monica Studios has accomplished with this game is nothing short of impressive, and that needs to be stated up front. But then there's the other side that bears mentioning too. If you hated God of War 2018 style of combat and exploration, then you should really avoid this game entirely. If you disagreed with the direction that Kratos' character was going in with the previous game, then you'll absolutely hate how he's portrayed here. This isn't an issue for me personally because I do like the direction that they've taken his development. I like that Kratos got a second chance at being a father and has learned from his past mistakes to grow into a wiser man, but I know a lot of people really dislike this new version of his character and prefer the tragic portrayal of the original series. Including, apparently, the series' original creator, David Jaffe. This was one of the more interesting discourses that came from this game, and I would like to view it as the ultimate validation for anybody who is against this depiction of Kratos. What could possibly be more convincing than the creator of the series himself agreeing with your stance? Unfortunately, I don't see it this way. David Jaffe posted a 7 minute video on his YouTube channel that appears to be a compilation of clips from a livestream where he discussed the matter, and all he did was make the same awful takes that have already been posted to death on social media. Now, I don't want to be too harsh on the subject because his arguments were made with respect for Ragnarok's developers, and he's even more entitled to have an opinion on the subject than arguably anybody else. Period. And he did say that he liked Kratos' depiction in God of War 2018, but not in Ragnarok. This is an understandable perspective, because as we're going to see during the story section, Kratos is not nearly as much of a driving force for the narrative as the characters around him. David Jaffe also demonstrates a level of maturity that most people on the internet don't by acknowledging that the game simply isn't for him, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't need to be for you. So, even though I think that several of his points are extremely fallible and can be easily refuted, I don't think that this is really the place for that. I'd rather use it as an example of how divisive this game can be in regard to this character. I just wish that we could have gotten some more insightful arguments from the series creator about what Kratos means to him and what specifically it was about Ragnarok that made him dislike where the series was going. I think that would be an interesting conversation to have, it's just a shame that's not what we got from his video. But let me ask you this, if I walked, if I came to you and pitched you the character Kratos from 2018's game, and you had never heard of Kratos before, I don't know if you would go, that sounds like a great character. I think he's only great because of, he's kind of, you know, he shit the bed in his previous games in terms of as a person, and now he's coming around the mountain, you know what I'm saying? There are other areas of the game that can be equally divisive. If you already didn't like Atreus character in the previous game or found him annoying, then you really should consider skipping this game for that reason alone. He has even more agency in driving the narrative than he did before, and I think he's supposed to be intentionally grading at some points in the story. If you were expecting a return to form for the God of War series that takes a couple steps back and tries to be closer to the older games, and you somehow haven't abandoned hope of this happening, then Ragnarok is going to be the final nail in the coffin. But if you were expecting God of War 2018 but bigger, better, and flashier, then I couldn't recommend this game enough. One thing that made me really appreciate the work that went into this game were the various interviews that game director Eric Williams had since its release. Hearing him speak about anything regarding the story shows just how much attention to detail there was in its creation. I really appreciate how straightforward he is during these interviews, using his time to shed some light on the development process behind what he's being asked about. It's a breath of fresh air from how most of these types of interviews go. One of my favorite things that he said during these interviews is when he explained the design philosophy behind this game, all eights make a ten. 
He explains that if everything in your game is at an 8 or above, then it will be elevated to a higher rating, but anything that falls below that will bring down the rest of the experience and attract criticism. Once something was polished to an 8, then he would have the team devote time to other areas that needed work so that they could reach that same standard. He then goes on to compare this to a glass half empty versus glass half full approach. If more things are full than they are empty, then people will see the game more favorably. I think that this philosophy single-handedly made Ragnarok what it is and explains the general evenness to the game, but also explains why so many systems feel like they failed to reach their full potential. Santa Monica Studios has also released several short documentaries that give us a glimpse into the game's development, each of which are about 10 minutes long. These documentaries vary in how much useful information they provide, but each of them has at least one interesting fact that made me appreciate the game on a deeper level. The most interesting one was the Becoming Kratos documentary, where they talk about the motion capture aspect of the game. They brought on Christopher Judge to speak about his performance, but they also included a few of Kratos' voice actors for the other languages to shed some light on how they tried to portray his character. The documentary about the soundtrack ranked a little lower in how useful it was for this project, but even this had a small detail that wasn't given nearly as much credit as I think it deserves. Music production lead Sonia Coronado mentions in this video how they worked to implement a system that prevents melodies from being cut off during gameplay. This is something I had noticed while playing, but I never paid much attention to. Before a track switches at the end of an encounter, the melody is given a chance to finish instead of simply fading into the next track. It's such an inconsequential feature that only exists because the developers cared enough to put the extra effort into making it work, and I can only imagine how much extra work it took. This sort of thing is what I find so fascinating about Ragnarok. So much love and care was poured into this game that it's hard for me not to appreciate it for that fact alone. This game is so ridiculously high quality, it feels like a passion project for more than just one person involved, and it was this passion that pushed me to keep meeting the game halfway. Keep playing, keep seeing the effort on display, and keep going until you can say that you've seen all there is to see. In many regards, Ragnarok feels like a love letter to the God of War franchise, headed by a man who has been with the series since the very beginning, starting as just a combat designer before finding himself as game director just under 20 years later. But Ragnarok is also a game with a combat system so rigidly designed that it can feel downright unnatural to play at times, which almost required me to rewire my brain just for everything to click. It's a combat system that encourages you to experiment with its systems while not feeling very interested in explaining itself, all while the game holds your hands so tightly during the mandatory puzzle sections and refuses to let go. It's a game that I desperately want to love as much as the people who made it, but have been progressively soured towards the longer I was exposed to its faults. And so, I'm left in a position where I can't bring myself to say that I love it, but I also don't really hate it either. I'm just… torn. And that brings us to this video. I started this project all the way back at launch, and while I did take several breaks for personal reasons, that just gave me extra time to try out some of the post-launch content like New Game Plus and the DLC. I've completed four playthroughs, three on fresh saves and one on New Game Plus where I loaded my third playthrough, which hadn't done any of the endgame content so I didn't have much of the best gear. My first playthrough was on the second highest difficulty, but each playthrough after that was done on Give Me God of War. I did this for two reasons. The first is that I needed something to force me to engage with the combat on the highest level. In a skill-based action game like this one, it makes it a lot easier to see what does and doesn't work when everything is tuned so tightly. The second reason is that I wanted to see what kinds of rewards you would get for completing it on the highest difficulty. God of War 2018 had unique cosmetics for this, and Ragnarok has… nothing. Well, that's disappointing. Despite this, I still committed to beating the game on this difficulty three times. I also tried to make sure that each playthrough was distinct, trying out different playstyles and messing with the systems in a new way on each run. And what I can say after an extensive amount of game time is that I was sick of Ragnarok by the end of my last playthrough. But I didn't hate it. This game's highs are very high, but its lows, while not reaching the same depths of the previous game, still sank deep enough to make me frequently consider quitting for good. But I didn't. I saw the game through to its conclusion each time, and after New Game Plus released back in April of 2023, I saw it through again, going the extra mile and doing all but a single piece of endgame content. Then the DLC released in December of 2023, and I was back for more. I even started up a fifth playthrough that I only played on stream, proving that despite the mountain of criticism I have for this game, I'm pretty happy with my time spent with it. I've left things off on a high note, feeling like I've genuinely conquered something, and seeing as how brutal the endgame content is on New Game Plus, paired with the max difficulty in refusing to use any handicap items like Resurrection Stones, I absolutely did conquer it. But there's another reason that I felt the need to see it through into the end, and it's about my stance on analysis content in general. 
I feel that anybody in my position is obligated to finish a game that they intend to cover, if possible. There are valid reasons for why this can't be done, like performance or stability issues, but there needs to be a good faith effort to, at the very least, finish the game once. I debated whether I was going to go back and do a New Game Plus playthrough, but after seeing that there were numerous gameplay changes, I ultimately decided to, because I cannot call this a genuine deconstruction of this game without seeing these changes for myself. Everybody has different standards for their own content, but I know that a lot of people would agree that even a surface level analysis should at least finish the game they're covering, and probably do some level of research and fact checking to make sure they're not criticizing the game based on bad information. My stance is simple, if I don't finish the game, I don't make a video on it. I don't think that my opinion is so important that I need to have one on every game that I play, and there are several videos that were pretty much finished that I never released because it was either full of poorly thought out bad takes, or I felt that it didn't add anything to the discussion. It was fluff, and there are many Ragnarok reviews that fit that description. It harms the relationship between developers and their audience when the loudest voices care more about making noise than giving valuable feedback. I want games to be better, and I want developers to listen to their audience, but the feedback has to be good, and too many people are more interested in tearing something down than giving it a chance to grow. You're probably wondering why I'm saying this, and it's for this reason. I am going to go harder on Ragnarok than I have any other game on this channel to date. That doesn't mean I'm automatically going to be more negative, but I am going to hold it to a greater level of scrutiny than I would most. There are a few reasons for why Ragnarok is getting this treatment, but the biggest one goes back to what I said just a few minutes ago. The people who made this game clearly poured their heart and soul into it. The standard of care it received is what made it so polished and even on release, with me experiencing no game-breaking bugs and only two noticeable ones that I can even remember. This game was designed to be held to this level of scrutiny, so we're going to see just how well it holds up. The issues with this game run deep, and they only get more complicated the deeper you go. This has made this game extremely difficult to analyze, and when you add just how dense the story is with details, there is a lot to discuss here. So, let's get started.